All right, in this video, Bill is going to be talking about the status bar. Woohoo! What do we have, Bill? Well, the status bar is this uh, area down here at the bottom. Good enough. That concludes the video. <laughs> Later, guys. It's a great <laughs> video. Right, so what does it provide for us? Uh, it kind of like provides information on uh, what you're doing and uh, status on what's going on and then some uh, extra controls as well. Okay, cool. Uh, let's start at the, at the left here. We have the Max Script Mini Listener, which, as you may recall, I used a little bit in the last video to create a sphere. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fancy sphere creation. So you can type fancy things in there and make cool things happen with it. Right. 3ds max you can type in the in the white space and you could see status in the pink space okay so let's say i want to just create a sphere boom there's, there's your sphere. a sphere yep and then you can actually see status here however you actually have to go up into the max rip mini listener or in the max rip listener and you have to turn on macros okay. in order to be able to see status here don't worry about that guys more yeah. on that later you can actually see it Right. Uh, as I'm moving, you can see the status changing. Cool. And so basically, everyone out there, that's just for code type stuff that allows some pretty powerful things to be done. Period. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to keep this simple. <laughs> yes. And here we have the status line. This tells you uh, which kinds of objects are selected and how many are selected. Okay. So let me quickly create another sphere uh, by doing a shift drag along the x axis to clone it. Hit OK. I have two spheres. I'm going to do a selection drag. And now you can see we have two objects selected. Right. Nice. And if we had a, a bigger resolution, you could actually read that whole line. Right. It's kind of cramped up because we're kind of small on the resolution. Right. Now, this next area down here I'm really excited about. Bear with me, guys. I'm a little excited. I'm ecstatic <laughs> about this one. This is the prompt line. This is Max's way of kind of guiding you along commands and helping you out and telling you what to do. Okay. So let's say we want to go back up to uh, select and link. We want to link an object to another object. We click that. Look at the prompt line down here. It says click to select an object, then drag it to assign it to a parent. Okay. So I'm going to obey. I'm going to click to select the object, drag it to assign it to a parent, and now you've selected and linked. Excellent. I just I love that little prompt line. It's, it's very little, handy. Kind of a helpline in case you get stuck using a tool. Yeah. And uh, now here we have the uh, selection lock toggle. And now this allows you to basically uh, uh, fix on selecting a certain object. So you can't unselect it, and you can't select other objects. I'll go ahead and turn it on, and I'll show you what I'm saying. Okay. It's locked. You can only select that one object. Now if you go down to the Move tool, if, yeah, I'm not even clicking on the gizmo. I'm still moving. It's very nice. Right. So you are locked right onto that selection. Now, uh, it is important to note that there is a hotkey to activate this. Yes, there is. And it's a real easy hotkey to tap, especially if you're coming to Max from so other big, 3D applications. Big hotkey. Yes. Yeah, very large. It's probably <laughs> the biggest hotkey on your keyboard. Yep, how sure big is. your hotkey is. That's right. <laughs> it is the space bar. Right. So I'm if, hit the space bar now. Watch the icon. Boom. It is now toggling the selection lock toggle. So, I mean, it's very handy if you want to... Uh, Basically, I don't know, fit, Yeah, like you said, fix in on a particular selection so you can't unselect it, so sure. you don't accidentally grab anything else in your scene. But remember that you've turned it on, because nothing is more frustrating than sitting there going, why can't I select anything else? Right. Why can't I deselect this object? Remember, your eyes should immediately cut down to the lock button and see if it's on. Sure. If you're using another popular Autodesk product, you may be using that hotkey for other things. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Just make sure you watch that icon, guys. Moving right along, we have the transform type in icon here. Hmm, transform type in. Interesting. This is actually in relation to the next thing, the coordinate display here. Okay. It allows you to type in uh, exact values for your transforms. And uh, this allows you to toggle between absolute and relative transforming. Cool. Uh, why don't I just do a quick example sure. to, uh, Show me. to explain this. We have our two spheres. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move one up in Z, say about uh, maybe 50 units or so. They're both coming along. They are. <laughs> There's a hierarchical relationship. Yes, when there is. The demonstration from earlier. Thanks, guys. I'm going to unlink that selection. That's okay. I don't think anybody else heard us. <laughs> Shoo, yeah. Good thing that wasn't recorded. Yeah. Okay. So now we've moved up one of our spheres in Z. The other one is staying along the way it should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say we want to uh, move them both. Okay. Uh, and we're, we, right now we have this set to an absolute mode. Mm -hmm. So let's say we, uh, we type in 50 for Z, see what happens. They both go to 50. Right. They both go to the absolute value of 50 units positive in the Z direction. Cool. So I'm going to hit Control-Z and undo that command. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to switch this to relative mode. I'm going to type in 50 again. 
Ah. They've moved relative to their initial positions. That's right. So cool. that's what that does. And moving right along, we have the, uh, the grid spacing icon, also mm -hmm. known as the grid settings display. This tells you how big each grid line is in max units. Wow. That's kind of a mouthful. Um, but yes, that's what it is. So, yeah. In yeah. this case, each grid space is 10 max units. Right. Gotcha. And now we down here we have the time tag. Um, I'm probably going to hold off on that until we get into animation. This allows you to label different frames of your animation okay. so that you can quickly get to that point in time later. Cool. Kind of okay. like a text label for your animation. Like a bookmark. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, you know, actually that's it. I do want to very quickly, uh, we're not going to get into any detail for the animation controls down here because we are going to talk about animation in a separate video. And then we've already addressed the viewport controls uh, right. quickly in the viewport video. Right. But we just wanted to kind of lay everything out here. And, of course, uh, the timeline and the time slider will also be talked about in the animation video. That's right. All right. But so that's that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks, guys. Thanks.